Hello everyone, I am Scutlist, and when the calendar hit August 5th, we knew we were in for some new Warriors Orgy 4 news. Going for a little over an hour, Koei Tecmo's livestream, which I intended live and you may have seen me here and there in the chat, handed us a great many new facts about Warriors Orgy 4 for us to talk about. First off, one of the biggest pieces of info, we got our first look at the mechanics of deification gameplay as we get a good look at Mitsunari in his godly form. After Mitsunari defeats a resilient and very grim Reaper-esque enemy called the Chaos Origin, he picks up an orb left behind and is ready to achieve deification, as indicated by the word Divine Power above him. When Mitsunari achieves deification, they use his Divine Artifact, a scythe, almost exclusively, with only one small moment of using his standard moveset. And there's a good reason for that. From the looks of it, when you achieve deification, you can use divine artifacts as much as you please for as long as the deification goes on for. This bar, circling this orb, is the fuel used for the divine artifacts. When Mitsunari was using his scythe earlier in his normal form, the bar drained with every new attack with the scythe he made. But in deification form, the bar stayed full no matter how much he attacked with it. So it seems the real trick of the deification forms is to access them, and then just massacre the enemies by using your divine weapon non-stop. We've already seen evidence of plenty of how these weapons just slaughter your enemies when used properly. Also, the time limits of a deification is marked by a slow moving bar that appears above the portrait of a deified character. Once this drains, get prepared to be booted back to your old mortal self and then it's back to being enslaved by the bar that dictates how much you can spam your divine weapons. I even bothered to time the deification, and it seems to take roughly 50 seconds for the bar to go from full to being completely drained. I assume there's some way to extend the time though, like an item drop you can pick up that gives you back a chunk of the bar that you've already lost, but that's just an assumption on my part. Going back to the enemy that drops the item that lets Mitsunari achieve his deification form, as I said, it's called the Chaos Origin. And considering that the DW and SW characters are generally fighting to quell the chaos in their own ways, this thing, and others like it, might have a not insignificant role in the overall plot. Speaking of deifications, we have four of them confirmed already. Zhao Yun, Yukimura, Mitsunari, and Sao Pi. Now, let's be introduced to our fifth deification. I'll just leave the reveal unedited for you. Mm. <laughs> 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 Guan Yin Ping gets the fifth deification, which isn't terribly surprising, really. She's already one of the most popular female Dynasty Warriors characters. Her getting a deification does point to a theory that deifications are mostly going to really popular characters. Because of that, you could have the educated guess that Nal Tora or Gracia could get the next deification. What's worth noting, though, is that Yin Ping's deification is not based on a Greek god or goddess. Instead, it's based on Freya from Norse myth. We've already had Norse divine weapons, now we have a Norse deification. Also, with Guan Yin Ping's deification, alongside Zhao Yun's deification, we have two deifications from the Shu faction. Anyone who had theorized that there would be only a single deification per Dynasty Warriors faction can put that theory to rest. Though I do hope that the Wu faction can get one of its characters deified. They're generally the least popular DW faction and do tend to get brushed aside a lot, so throw the dog a bone and give, say, Lu Xun or Da Chao a deification form. Past Guan Yin Ping, we have a new character, Meet Perseus. 
and his reveal as a new character brings with it an important fact. Perseus, the son of Zeus and a mortal woman, is not an Olympian god. Previously, the assumption that I and many others had was that all of the Greek newcomers would have been the gods of Olympus. But now we have Perseus, and his inclusion opens up the door possibility of other non-god Greeks like Heracles. Perseus's moveset involves many, many divine weapons. In fact, this is just supposition on my part, but he may be the reason why the Dynasty and Samurai Warriors characters have their divine weapons. The only story fact about him that is concrete right now is that he is standing in opposition to Zeus, Athena, and any other Greek gods yet to be revealed on the roster. This may mean he's one of the good guys, as we're led to believe that Zeus and the other Greek gods are antagonists. For the divine weapons, we got to see two more. Masamune Date employing what appears to be Hermes's shoe, and Daji using some kind of hourglass. Also, on the subject of Daji, I think, emphasis on the word think, but I think they may have given a slight update to her moveset. I'd have to get out my copy of 4G3 Ultimate and do a comparison to be sure, but if it's true, that would be a great thing. Most of the Orochi exclusive character movesets have aged horribly. There are some that withstood the test of time, like Himiko continuing to have a crowd control game that's a little too good, but for the most part, the characters introduced in the first and second Warriors Orochi titles are in desperate need of a moveset upgrade. And that will about cover it. There was a bit more of the stream, but it was mostly just them talking about pre-order incentives, which I already covered when these incentives were first revealed in the June livestream. There was also a talk about a giveaway in a game demo, but that's just for Japan. But they will have a talk show about Warriors Orochi 4 at Tokyo Game Show. So then, that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time.